Hello everybody, let us study how to compute lexicographic parsings efficiently, like for instance this lexparse which can be used for data compression. So what is lexparse? Lexparse is a text factorization, meaning that it factorizes your text into factors f1, f2 and so on. It is usable for lossless data compression and the idea behind lexparse is that it uses the lexicographic order of the suffixes of your input text t. Lexparse is a special kind of bidirectional parsers, which got introduced by Stora and Szymanski back into the 17th. But Lexparse is more recent, meaning that Never and others published a journal article last year about it, and the same authors introduced Lexparse four years ago in an archive preprint. Let's first review what a bidirectional parse is. Given a text T, the bidirectional parse, factorizes t into factors, and given a factor f, um, this factor is represented either as a single character if the length is 1, or as a pair of reference j and length l, meaning that if f, for instance, starts at position i, there is another occurrence of f appearing at position j. To give examples for bidirectional parsers, let us look at the following example text banana bean, meaning no bananas. This gives us a text of length 9, and we can now start to create arbitrary factors like a factor starting at the position 1 and referring to 7. So we have seen that the is a reference at position 7, and we can create here a factor of length 2. And in a bidirectional parse, we can allow self-references in the sense that if we create here a factor that refers to this part, meaning we have a reference of 2 and length 3, then we have an overlap, meaning that, for instance, here this 4, position 4, overlaps with the reference and the factor itself. Nevertheless, we prohibit the creation of cycles, because if we have cycles, we can no longer decompress our original characters. But now one may wonder why can we allow self-references. Well, during the decompression, we can decompress character-wise. Like in this situation, we can start decoding first the A, then the N, and then because we have already decoded the A, we can use it here for writing it at position 6. In what follows, I use a notation that T is the input text and the text length, sigma is alphabet size, and TI is the suffix of T starting at position I. Now I can explain what Lexparse does. It processes the text T from left to right, and when computing a factor starting at, pos at text position i, it selects the suffix tj directly lexicographically preceding ti, and then j becomes the reference, and the factor length is the length of the longest common prefix of ti and tj. In our example, we start with uh, position 1 and we query for the preceding suffix of suffix starting in position 1, which is in this case 7, because 7 also starts with BAN. It's lexicographically smaller because there is nothing else and there is nothing between, so there is no other suffix starting with B. So we know that and then we can determine the lengths by comparing and find uh, this is length 3 and then we know where the next unprocessed character starts at position 4 and we do the same. An, we find here again an An, it held the same properties so we know that this is a reference and can continue recursively, recursively in this fashion, knowing that uh, we have to copy, copy here two characters. The question is by doing though, why don't we create cycles? Well, we don't create cycles because a reference is always the starting position of a lexicographically preceding suffix. And the lexicographic order introduces a ranking, meaning a total order on all suffixes. 
and uh, total order is a property that is transitive. So whenever we have a cycle, this means that at one point we have to refer to a lexicographically succeeding suffix and this can never happen. So it's not possible to create cycles. Okay, so we have a valid bidirectional parse. But the question is, how can we compute that efficiently? So within linear time, this is our target, how much space is needed? In known solution, um, there is just written that uh, you can compute it in order of n log n bits of space. And this known solution uses three integer arrays, where each array takes n log n bits. And, and what I want to focus on is a stepwise reduction of the space, first by removing the LCP array, and then transforming these two arrays into an array called phi, and finally introducing a compressed representation of phi called phi prime, which together with b we can emulate phi. And the third solution runs in uh, uses just r log n plus n plus small order of n bits, where r is the number of character runs in the Boris Wheeler transform. So the first ingredient, this SA, I just explained now, it's uh, the suffix array. And the suffix array is defined on the order of the suffixes. So we take the text, take all its suffixes. And for visualization, I just left align all the suffixes. And before each suffix, I write its starting position. Then I sort the suffixes lexicographically. And during the sorting, I keep along these starting positions. And now if I write these numbers into an array, then I get the suffix array. Now if I do that naively, then because, um, then because writing all suffixes would take already n squared time, this is prohibitive in our setting. Luckily, there are all algorithms computing the suffix array in linear time. And this is used in the known solution because it runs in linear time, it needs the suffix array. So what can you do with the suffix array? Where you can look up the references. For instance, for starting at position 1, what we want to do is we look at up the position 1 in the suffix array, go to the preceding value, and it is a 7, and wow, we have found the reference. And we're done here. We go to the next position, which is 4, do the same query, 4, preceding 1 is 8, we're done. Now, the question is, how can we retrieve this value efficiently? Because scanning for the 4 down there could take a lot of time. So, uh, more abstractly speaking, if we have a factor f starting at position i, we want to know the index p at which um, su the suffix array stores the i. Luckily, there is uh, the inverse suffix array isa, which is basically the inverse permutation of SI and looking up in SI uh, in ESA I gives us this position P. So we know that the refer a reference of F is just uh, we look up the disposition P and then take minus one and then take then the suffix array value. The length is given by another array called LCP array which stores for each position P in the longest the length of the longest common prefix of the piece lexicographically smallest suffix with its lexicographically predecessor. And, well, this is exactly what we need for the length. So this is um, the length of the factor f. So the known algorithm computes these three arrays and then computes for, uh, determines each factor in constant time by using that as a reference and the LCP value as a length. So we get linear time and it's very easy to implement. It's just three lines of pseudocode where we take um, a case analysis whether LCP is zero or, one, or uh, larger than zero because if it's zero we don't have a reference. So we just output a plain character and advance by one. Otherwise we can find a reference which is based on uh, this uh, previous computed reference, and um, this is the length. 
And then we also know that the length of the factor is, is uh, LCPI, so we can skip LCPI characters and know where the next uh, unprocessed character is. So this runs in linear time, but uses stream teacher arrays. We implemented that and run that on a concrete example based on an int input, which is uh, based on a byte alphabet. And we assume that each entry of an integer array takes four bytes. Then for 200 megabytes of input, we get 2.6 gigs of RAM, which is pretty much. And in the following plot, we plotted the algorithm uh, divided into phases. So here you have for the blue part, this is a phase for constructing the suffix array. And we vertically separate each phase into the memory which is already given and which is the, the dark color. In the case for the suffix array, the given memory is just input text. And the light color is the additional memory. Like for the suffix array construction, there is the suffix array which gets constructed and additional space needed for the construction. The interesting part is that the legs parse is super fast and it does not need so much additional space. But then the question is, how can we get rid of this complex pre-computations to make it simpler and more memory efficient? With that, we look at a more abstract flowchart and we see that uh, we first take the input, compute suffix array, it's inverse, then run Kasai's algorithm, which computes the LCP array. And then we, together with these three arrays, we run LexParse to compute the compressed file, where each step takes linear time. Now, our first reduction is that we can drop the LCP array just by computing the factor lengths naively. And why can we do that? Well, we given uh, we we sum up all factor lengths when we come up to n, so meaning that we have order of n character comparisons. So we're still in, in linear time. So this is feasible. So the, the flowchart simplifies to that there is no SCP array left. And the next question is, are both SA and ISA necessary? Well, if we take the phi array, which is defined by exactly what we want to have, exactly as a reference, then we don't need them. What does phi do? Well, for given, again, we want to have the reference for position 1, we would query ISA for the entry where i is stored in the suffix array, or where 1 is stored in suffix array, and then um, go the, to this position, take minus 1, and then look up in the suffix area, the respective entry, but that entry is already stored in the phi array at the position where we want the query. So basically, we can just use phi for the references and compute the factor length naively. Like here, we can look up in the 7 and just compute naively that the length is 3. This gives us a very simplified algorithmic flowchart. And you can also see that the execution got simplified and that uh, the memory bounds got reduced by about now just one third, uh, roughly one third. And the nice thing is that we can even improve that by computing phi directly without suffix array and its inverse. And that can be done by an algorithm due to Goto and Banai, which runs in linear time and just needs order of sigma log n bits of additional working space. So we have now seen three different pre-computation steps, each with different maximal memory usage. So known solution using three different arrays takes 2.88 gigs. And then the second one, which don't uses the LCP array and uh, transforms these two inputs into the Phi array takes 1.76 gigs, and just using Phi gives us just one gig. So all these methods run in linear time, but the second one only needs one third of the known solution. 
Now we can further develop the memory by compressing phi itself. So we can find a compressed representation in phi that we can still query efficiently. For that, we look at phi and see that for highly repetitive texts, it is common that a lot of entries exhibit a property that the entry is the previous entry plus one, like down there. And if we exploit that, then we can achieve compression. And the idea is that we just omit these values and we get a phi prime where we just left out these ones. For visualization, I just left the line out phi prime up there. And in B, it's a bit vector which marks the positions of phi that are kept in phi prime with a zero, those positions that are left out. Now, having B and phi prime, we can query for phi. So we can emulate phi with B and phi prime. For instance, given a query position j, j equals to 4, we look up in B, 4, which is in this case 1. In that case, we count the number of 1s up to this position in B, which gives us 3. And then we take the third entry in phi prime, which is 8. And this is actually our solution because in the fourth position of phi there is 8. This query uh, for the counting the ones is also called rank. The rank j counts the number of ones up to position j. If now this query position um, is, for instance, 3, which gives us a zero, we first do the same step as previously, though we count the number of ones up to this position, which gives us in this case two ones. So we look up the second entry of phi prime, which is a four, but this is not yet the right answer. The right answer is five. And we get five by counting the number of zeros, the number of trailing zeros, trailing after the last one. And we get this difference by this bluish formula down there, which basically uses rank and select queries, where select k gives us the case one in b. And together with that, because there is just one zero, we add one to four and get the five. Next question is, of course, how can we do rank and select? Uh, it's uh, easy. We just compute a rank select data structure upon our bit vector b, which takes uh, linear time in the construction, but it can answer a rank and select query in constant time. It uses n plus smaller of n bits of space, including the bit vector b. And together with that, we come to the final space analysis that the number of entries that do not exhibit this nice compression property can be bounded by R, where R is the number of character runs in the boris wheeler transform. This is a result due to Kerkinen and others. So we get the final space of R log n plus n plus small order of n bits of total space for our compressed file representation. So in summary, we can construct the lex parse in linear time just by using the phi array. And we have seen that uh, the phi array has a compressed version of having this number of bits. The open problem is, can we construct this compressed representation directly from the text within compressed space? Our implementations are available in the Tutocom framework available under this homepage. Thanks for listening and any questions are always welcome.